Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++ and today we're going to be learning a little bit about recursion. Now what's recursion? Well basically it's an alternative form of iteration or in other words using loops except what you do is you call a function within that function. And there's re um, places in which you would use recursion and there's other times you, that you might use iteration at the end of this tutorial, I'll tell you when I personally think it's better to use recursion as opposed to iteration. So, um, basically, uh, basically, you can pretty much do anything you can with iteration as you can with recursion, and it's just another way of doing it. So, for example, let's actually look at a way of printing numbers. So, let's say we want to uh, type in, let's say, like 6 or whatever, or 5, or just some number, and it'll either count up to that number or it'll count down from that number. So, let's, uh, let's actually just look at this first. So, the first thing we're going to do is create a num. We'll ha uh, prompt the user to type in an integer. And, man, it's hot in here. I forgot it's summer, so it's almost summer. It's June 16th. Uh, but, uh,. It's almost summer. When is it? June twentieth or twenty-first? I think it's twenty-first. And uh, there you go. So, so I have a num. So we'll type in some sort of num and take it in. So let's create our recursive function now that will print it all for us. So, or it will it'd be a counter for us. So instead of doing a loop, we'll go instead of going, you know, three, two, one. We'll use a recursive statement instead. So it will be a, I don't know. Uh, what do I want to call it? Counter something like that and of course we'll be passing in that num so that will be called counter a recursive function that counts up down it'll be whichever one we do first uh, I already know what it is but I don't I don't want to say what I'll be doing first so at param int number to increment or decrement depending, because I'm, I'm going to change it so it goes both ways. You'll see it both ways, don't worry. And we'll have void counter, and uh, let's see here, int, and I'll just call it count. Okay, so, oh, first of all, I should count it, or call it, not count it, and throw num in there. Okay, so now we call the function counter, and now we want it to print. So what, so in order to call a function within a function at some point you'll need to stop uh, with with uh, loops what we usually did was while so one variable is less than another variable or something like that well how do you do that with recursive functions well, what you need is what's called a base case so a base case will be an if statement and that will tell you whether or not to keep going or not so the first thing we want to do is let's say we want to count from the number that we started with and keep printing it from then on. Then we want to keep doing this, we only want to keep doing this while n is greater than 1. Is that what I want to do? Uh, we'll find out eventually. Wait, why do I do n? Count. There we go. While count is greater than 1. Okay, so we have num. We'll type in a number like 5 and then pass it in. So we have 5. 5 is greater than 1. So execute this piece of code. So the the code I like to have executed will be uh, counter, hmm, or what should I have to say? Um, number, I don't know, something like that. And then we'll actually print count. Something like that. Then afterwards, so now it will print the number that we passed in, which would be 5 or whatever. Then after this, what you would probably want to do is to actually call the function again. So in order to do this, we'll type out counter, and then this time we'll type in count again. However, what do you think will happen with this? This will actually cause your application to crash on two levels. One level is, first of all, this will be an infinite loop, because we'll keep going in there with the same number again and again and again, because it's not decrementing. It'll always be greater than 1, assuming we typed in something greater than 1. Another reason why it will crash is because when you use recursive statements, uh, you're, you keep passing uh, numbers by value, which thus creates what's called a stack. You might have heard of stacks before. That's something that we're not going to really get into until the level 2 playlist for C++ when I do that, 
when, when we learn about stacks a bit more. But every time you go into this function, you're, you're continuously creating a new variable. And until you exit, every time you go in here, we've never exited, exited any of the preceding functions where we keep going in, but we're not actually finishing any of them. So now we're creating all of these variables by value, creating this stack, and eventually your computer memory won't be able to hold it all. And, well, there's nothing you can do after that. So that's another way your application would crash in such a case. So it's very dangerous. So what you're going to want to do is actually subtract by one. So we we'll decrement. Don't use the minus minus, and there's reasons why you won't want to do that. And I'll show you uh, later on not to use the you know the minus minus. Uh, okay, so uh, let's run this and let's see if this works. So I'll type in like a seven. And okay, so it was uh, greater than or equal to. So actually, let me fix that really quickly. Greater than or equal to. See, I can't even remember what I did. So I'll type in 7, and there it is. So basically what happens is, well, we typed in 7, and it passed 7 in as a parameter, and it was greater than or equal to 1. So what it did was it printed it, and then it passed in uh, 6. 7 minus 1 as a parameter. So then it printed 6, then 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, and when it was equal to 1, still did it. And then it tried passing in 1 minus 1, that last time to make zero. So it went in here again with count equal to zero, which is the base case says, no, no, it's got to be one or greater. So then it went through this whole thing, nothing worked, and then exit, exited. Then exited the previous one when it was one. Then it exited when it was two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it finished off the rest. So bear in mind that if you had more code down here, that code, this code would not be executed so you've already printed number one here. And it would get printed every single time that you actually got through this function. So there's, there, there are, it's not exactly like a loop, if you want to think about it that way. It's, it's not exactly like iteration. Other stuff can still occur. So bear that in mind. So it's 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now what happens if we actually reverse this? What if we do all the recursion before we actually did the printing? Let's see what the difference would be. So if I did this, click save, and then I ran this, and if I typed in, let's uh, type in 7 still, uh, and there you go. This time it went in the reverse order. This time it went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it went through everything, but this time in the reverse order, because, well, it's not until the number got to 1 that it actually did any printing. So kind of like what I said before, if there's code after all the work, recursion go, going on, it's not until that very last recursive statement holds true, the last time the base case still works, that uh, you will finally move on and finish the rest of the code. And this is the rest of the code right here. So as you can see, it went seven, it went seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then once it hit zero, it didn't work. So it left after that zero and then went back to when it was one and finished the rest of the code. So it exited exited when this was zero and then finish the rest. And then finish the rest when it was two, then three, then four, then five, all the way up to seven. So it went backwards. So, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the last one I can show you is, is, is an example of when it actually returns a value every time instead of it being a void function. And probably the most common example you will find is uh, our uh, a factorial problem. So I'll show you how to do that. Even though it's kind of pointless, there's probably a billion tutorials on how to do that. I don't know. I'm just I'm sure there is that's the most common, but in the my level two playlist I will be going deeper into recur recursive statements when we learn about sorting when we learn about um, cause sorting and uh, probably not searching but sorting we will learn how to sort arrays for an example using recursive statements so it's going to get a lot more advanced than this but this is just level one this is an introductory course in C plus plus so I'm not going to burden you with learning any kind of like difficult stuff yet. So I'm just going to show you an example of returning a value, and that's just going to be it for now. And we'll do more in the level 2 playlist when I make it, which will be this fall, most likely. So uh, so now we're going to be doing a factorial. So this will be an int instead. Then this will be an int. So thinking about a factorial problem, 
uh, we're going to be creating a stack. This is where stacks are more useful because you're going to need to save every value that you have every time you go inside the program. Uh, so we're going to be typing in like 7, for example, and we want to know what 7 factorial is, which in case you don't know is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 all the way down to times 1. And 0 factorial also equals 1. So our base case, starting over here, will be, uh, we'll only execute the code and actually, uh, if, and then what we're going to be typing out will be, uh, what I call it, count. Count is less than or equal to 1. So the very first thing we're going to actually check for is if it's even greater than 1. If it's not, if it's less than 1, we're just going to return 1. That's it. So if we type in 0 or 1, we'll return 1 and 1 will be printed. And you know what? I need to change that to this since it's going to be returning a value. There you go. So now it's going to actually print out the factorial number. So if we typed in like 0 or whatever, we're going to return 1. Now, I could do a logical thing and make sure it's only 0 or 1. If it's a negative number, don't do anything at all, but uh, it doesn't matter. We'll just assume the programmer knows what they're doing. But anyways, okay, so if it's less than or equal to 1, if it's not, if it's greater than 1, then what we're going to do is actually return a whole statement that includes the calling of this function again. And it's actually not that hard. Um, remember, factorials, how they work, like if you've done calculus, you'll have looked at factorials a little bit differently than just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If you have a number k, what's k factorial? Have you ever thought about it that way? What k factorial is, is k times k minus 1 times k minus 2, and then you get a dot, 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 3 times 2 times 1. Oops. This is how you would probably look at it in calculus if you were doing like a series, if you're working with series, convergence and divergence, or, or the binomial theorem. Uh, any of that kind of stuff, you'll, you'll be looking at factorials like this. And that's how you uh, it actually, if you were to visualize it, it's not just 3 times 2 times 1 if you looked at it that way. It's it's whatever value, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, so on. So, if you were to look at it that way, and the reason why I'm really in-depth with trying to explain this is because I don't want to just type out the answer and you're not going to really learn how to think recursively. You have to think about how would you implement this if you need to keep multiplying a number by one less of the previous number, then what would you do? So first of all, I kind of give it away that we're just going to return something directly. But we're going to want to return basically the number that we already have. Count and multiply it by the one less. So how do you do that? You do that by first letting out count, that's the current number. And how would you multiply it by the number that's one less? In order to do that, you would then call the function again, counter, and inside of that, you would type in count minus one. And that would give you one less, and it will keep going through again and again. So if I click save, and if I were to run this, let's just type out four. We get 24, which is four times three, which is 12, times two, which is 24, times 1, which is still 24. So that pretty much works out right there. If I were to type in, let's say, uh, 5, that should just be, we. what was the last number that we had? We had 24, right? So if you just multiply 24 by 5, you get 24 times 10 is 240, divided by 2 is 120. That's just another way of looking at how to multiply things by 5. It's just to multiply by 10 and cut it in half. That's how I do it. But as you can see, this factorial program works. So, uh, and quite a bit efficient too. It doesn't create any unnecessary variables. It creates none at all, except for the stack that you create. But um, that's about it. So now down to the last thing I wanted to talk about. When would you use uh, an iter iter iterative, uh, I don't even, iteration versus recursion? In my opinion, you would typically use recursion if you're going to be in use of the stack. If, if you have a reason 
to need to be creating a stack like we do in this situation, I would use recursion. If you're going to be doing something like I did in the last example earlier in this video, which is just printing things out, use a loop. And the reason is so you don't create stacks. Don't create stacks if you don't need them. So that's that's my take on when to use recursion as opposed to uh, iteration with loops, for loops, while loops. Uh, and that's about it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.